from San Francisco, it's The Cube, covering VMware Radio 2019, brought to you by VMware. Hi, welcome to theCUBE. Lisa Martin with John Furrier at the 15th annual VMware Radio, which is their R&D Innovation Summit. Pleased to welcome back one of the CUBE alumni extraordinaire, CEO of VMware, <laughs> Pat Gelsinger. Hey Pat, good morning. <laughs> good morning, great to be with great you guys to today. Thanks great, so much. Great to be here. So this, this is the 15th radio, your internal innovation summit that really has been very influential in VMware's development over the last 15 or so years. About 1,800 engineers here. So each year, growing more and more interest, excitement, cross-collaboration within VMware. Talk to us about how this is really worthy of the CEO's time to come here and with this geek fest. Well, it is uh, in many ways just one of these pieces of the VMware R&D culture. It's a research and development innovation offsite, and it's something you know long preceded me. But when I got here, it's like I'm going to keep doing it. Of course we are. You know, this is sort of like the uh, party for the top engineers, right? You know, they get to come, geek out, share their best ideas, interact with each other, and so it's become one of those unique pieces of our of our development culture. And ultimately, as I say, VMware, we only do two things right, develop great breakthrough, innovative, disruptive products, and make our customers successful with those products. So everything that we do sort of centers around those two things, and obviously if the products aren't great, we don't, have to, we don't know what to do. So to us, keeping that culture of innovation, and giving our engineers time to really just geek out, see what each other's are doing, challenge each other, it's really pretty special, and yeah, it deserves the CEO's time. And you, got, you just had your sales uh, President's Club, you know, with our top performers on the sales side, this is the technical version. Um, this hasn't been that organic piece of the VMware culture, engineering leadership. But you also have acquisitions, just acquired mm -hmm. Bitnami. Yes, so yes. So you've had a few other, you know, mm -hmm. Cloud Health, big time moves, relationship with AWS, Azure, um, the uh, Cloud Foundation stuff. How is the, uh, blending it together? Because you have all this organic innovation. I see cloud management, network and security, obviously the software defined data center is playing out as you, as you guys had predicted. How does the acquisitions fit into the culture and, the, and radio? Well, you know, part of it is when we talk to many of the uh, engineers about the acquisitions, we say, hey, we do radio. And they're like, huh? Right? This is, well, it's this opportunity for us to see what everybody is doing, interact at that level. And good engineers are almost always part of the decision with respect to acquisitions. So they just take to it like you know, fish and water, right? They just jump in, right? Start interacting with their peers, and it is such a uh, you know open, diverse uh, pool that all of a sudden ideas are being uh, bounced off each other, homogenized, challenged, and you know people seeing how they can connect with people. So to us many of the acquisitions just find this to be yeah. so beneficial to how they come into the company. And uh, they quite appreciate it, you know, just getting back from sales club, hey, the sales yeah. leaders, hey, this is pretty good, I like this, you know, for many of those acquisitions. But the engineers, this is even better for them. You guys aren't just buying stuff up, you guys are very specific in your acquisitions. Cloud Health, again, is a great example. You've seen, you know, AirWatch going with further back. Why Bitnami? What was so big and important about Bitnami to acquire them? Well, you know, we saw a couple of things. One is is that uh, you know, as a company, they uh, definitely had this ability, this uh, respect, rapport with the open source community. You know, and being able to cross between open source and enterprise credibility, that's exactly where VMware sees and wants to be able to position ourselves. So they fit exactly into that space. This idea of being able to bring enterprise packages for the cool open source application space, and we already had a multiple set of marketplace efforts internally where we saw that we needed that ecosystem play for activities, so they just snapped so perfectly into the middle of that and very much hybrid, multi-cloud uh, aspects to it. And uh, as we do for every one of our acquisitions, and I personally meet with every CEO before we do the deal, are they going to fit our culture? And uh, uh, you know, there aren't that many of our acquisitions where I have people saying, "No, no, I'll, 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 I'll be the executive sponsor for this one. No, 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 I, I will, I will be. No, 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 please, I'll, I'll do this one." And uh, you know, of course, the fact that it's in Seville, Spain, right? You know, yeah. I think, uh, I think a few of it was just driven by vacation plans, but it's all good. <laughs> well, of course, Erica, Cube alumni. I mean, we have a whole Cube alumni thing going on here. There's no M and A work we're doing here. Just good Cube alumni. She's a great executive. So you're planning the Cube visit to Seville, Spain, as well. I think. We'd love to, love to. Go. Of course, we have international presence. Um, 
<laughs> One of the things I always quote from you is, besides that hybrid cloud reference years ago, was a quote you said, I think in 2012 or 2013, I forget which year it was, uh, seems like yesterday. You said, if you're not out on that next wave, you're driftwood. Mm -hmm. So I got to ask you, here at radio, you got, you got all this organic stuff, which kind of, the, the wave's coming. Is this, what wave is, uh, are you seeing VMware riding right now? Because business is great, mm -hmm. um, you're pumping on all cylinders, you've kind of gone through your tenure as the, through the, the early days of, as you got CEO, and you know, so everything's normalized now, and you're on a good run. Mm -hmm. What wave are you going to be surfing on the business side with all this stuff behind you? What's, what, when does this all fit in? Well, you know, one of the things that I think is so critical for us now, and particularly with the, uh, you know, VMware Cloud and the AWS, you know, now with the relationships with Azure and IBM, Alibaba, our 4,000 VCPP partners, so that's, you know, really starting to take off. Our VMware Cloud Foundation on premise, we have big customers saying, okay, I get it, right? Don't look down the stack, look up rely on you guys to be the infrastructure, bring that together for the hybrid infrastructure as a service. And to me, you know, part of what I'm looking for from, this, from the conference is putting all those pieces together. Because our customers don't want to be doing it, they want us to do it. But we have to make it so consumable, so compelling, that just sort of like vSphere was at our beginning, they just sort of say, VMware, your hybrid cloud, that's what I want right, and be able to operationalize that at scale. And if we get that really working well for customers, the management, the automation, the security operations of that, boy, now we do have the opportunity to ride the Kubernetes wave, right? And to me, it really is, we have to straddle those two over the next uh, several years. So, Make so infrastructure moving up, super making the highest part of the stack. And then embracing that next major trend. Which and is what, the up on top of the stack programmability? Yeah, you know, in the, uh, as I've described uh, Kubernetes and containers, it's like Java was 20 years ago. You know, what was the last major software abstraction that the industry agreed upon? Java. You know, it's almost exactly 20 years ago, and it defined middleware abstraction for the last 20 years. Containers, Kubernetes, the next middleware abstraction. And we see Kubernetes becoming the next native API that the VMware infrastructure, SDDC, will support and will deliver. And we're going to make containers and Kubernetes so seamless with regard to the core VM infrastructure that a customer never needs to decide. What right. impact will this have? I mean, obviously you've been involved in many ways, talk about the Pentium and the Intel side of your career, obviously, and, 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 and what that enabled in terms of inflection point and growth and, and creation of, of, of value. Where do you see this Kubernetes abstraction? If this is going to be one of those inflection points, as, mm -hmm. you, as you point out, how do you envision the impact to the industry? What's well, going to happen? We, we see that Kubernetes layer impacting down as well as impacting up, and that's why we see it as so critical to get it right. You know, it becomes the consumption API of infrastructure, and we've talked about you know uh, infrastructure as code or you know API. It'll dis uh, displace uh, OpenStack as an API. It becomes the middleware uh, API of choice, but it also then defines the middleware abstraction of choice. So all of your web spheres, web logics, Java communities are going to get displaced as well as they are refactored into this automated, containerized, uh, scale-out world. And that's exactly where we're sitting. And that's another piece of the Bitnami acquisition that we just announced, because you know, being able to package containerized open source uh, uh, applications, uh, packages, exactly fits into that uh, strategy as well. And if we do those two things, I think VMware is going to be extraordinarily well position for decades to come, way past me. Yeah. So let's talk about customers. Here we are at Radio 2019, 15th year as I mentioned. You guys, this is a really competitive event. Engineers want to be here. You probably had well over a thousand project submissions. Mm -hmm. How do customers, one, benefit from the innovations that are discussed here mm -hmm. at Radio, but also how do customers influence some of the projects and the exciting things that engineers want to put together? Well, one of the things that we really enjoy about the whole VMware uh, R&D community is, you know, engineers are meeting with customers all the time. We push them out into those uh, places. You know, we selectively bring customers in and have them interact here at radio. We have other mechanisms like flings, right? You know, these open source lightweight things that customers can be giving us code, we can be giving them code. Uh, we, you know, regularly, uh, you know, bring them into our campus for, you know, their participation participation in different advanced programs. So it really is a very constant, 
ongoing and somewhat end-to-end -end dialogue that we're having, whether that's from an early product concept that we might be seeing for the first time here at radio to uh, active participation and beta activities before we roll them out uh, broadly. So it really is having them participate in the end-to-end -end role of innovation. And sometimes, hey, it sounded like a good idea and it sort of sucked, right, <laughs> when we tried to do it. Other times it's sort of like, oh, wow, some of these things really have taken off and uh, gained legs well beyond what we would have uh, dreamed of. What have you seen at that this year's event, project-wise, featured project-wise, that really kind of caught your attention like, ooh, that's a really good idea. Well, I must admit, I just landed last night. <laughs> so today is my <laughs> first day at radio. So I uh, just got back from our sales club, yeah. as uh, John mentioned uh, earlier. So I think I'm going to have to take a buy on that question here, because i got to go do my homework here in a Well, I'll ask you a question. Minutes. You guys have a, um, um, attracted talent, engineering talent. This is obviously the best of the best elite forces. This is a challenge in the industry to retain talent. Yeah. What, and, the, and engineers love to work on hard problems. So I got to ask you, what's some of the hard problems that VMware is trying to tackle mm -hmm. that would attract the elite engineering forces to the company? Because again, you're talking about something really big that's going on with software. What are some of the big problems that are? Yeah, well, a couple of them that you know I'm I'm pretty focused on for our team. And one is we've said you know we we said it's a software defined data center, right? Going forward, it's the self driving data center. How do we bring so much telemetry and automation that we truly are running the data center on a customer's behalf? And if I you know, build on the Dell Technologies World announcement of VMware Cloud on Dell EMC, you know, we're now managing their on-premise data center from our cloud. Hmm. You know, and if we can put more machine learning, AI into the middle of that, it's not just that I want to do it instead of them, I want to do it dramatically better than they ever could, right? Using the greatest algorithms, telemetry, learning, et cetera, that the infrastructure becomes uh, more reliable, right? It becomes higher performance. It becomes increasingly predictive, right, of its behavior and adjusting to those things. So the self-driving data center is pretty high on the list uh, for us. You know, this idea then of a true multi-cloud operational plane where customers just say, Here, here's, here's my workload, you figure out where to run it, here are my policies, here's the workload, take care of it for me. Oh, today I was running it on this cloud. Uh, in the afternoon I brought it back on premise because you had Sounds spare easy. capacity, <laughs> right? You know, and wow, if you could do that at scale, but then you say, boy, you know, if I move it around, where does the data reside, right? You know, have I met my policies and compliance requirements? So this multi-cloud operational plane is a so huge- So the big problem that you're attracting talent is to abstract complexity away mm -hmm. and making it easy. Yeah, Basically. right, you know, fundamental. That's, that's what we do. <laughs> it's hard then, to tell. You know, some <laughs> of the cool things, uh, you know, the uh, our uh, blockchain, right, you know, also breaking through, as I've described, blockchain, yeah. it's like the uh, public-private key encryption uh, breakthroughs of 40 years ago. But they're still very raw, right? Their performance is crappy, you know, they don't scale very well, you have all sorts of issues associated with auditability and reputability of those uh, uh, mechanisms. So those are some of the new problems. And then also attacking entirely new new segments like NFV, right? Hey, we're going to build a 5G network that's not reliant on hardware, yeah. right? Well, when you're out of the quiet period, we're going to come to your office, we'll go a deeper dive on the business and some of the cool tech stuff. I, I look you forward go. to that. I so. look forward to that. And we're just coming up on VMworld in a couple of months. I think this will be the yeah. Cube's 10th time there. <laughs> any, <laughs> any little teasers that you can yeah. give us about VMworld 2019? Uh -huh. Well, we certainly hope that, uh, you know, we're able to bring a lot of these cloud messages together. Right, and have sort of you know connected all the dots uh, at uh, uh, VM World uh, this year. Stay tuned. You heard it here on the queue first. Some exciting announcements coming from VMware in just a few months at VM World 2019. Pat Gelsinger, CEO. Thank you so much for joining John and me at Radio 2019. As a pleasure, always. Thank you so much. Likewise. We want to thank you for watching. For John Furrier, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching the Cube from VMware Radio 2019 in San Francisco. Thanks for watching.